I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident, the interior, I would also... I can make the assurance that I will not leave... Oh. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. Your ship is not permitted to leave until you remit payment for your fines and submit yourself to execution. Only after your smoking corpse is thrown from an airlock will we lift the lockdown on your spacecraft. Captain? I would not recommend this course of action. Wait, you're the stylist? Uh, thank the law you're here. Everyone knows how particular the chairman is about his eyebrows. Here, take my biometric ID instead. Tartarus Docking Authority, signing off. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? Forgive me, Captain. Was there another topic on your... As you wish, Captain. <laughs> Alex... Security
The bar if it's got a storm like that guarding the gates. I've got to admit, I'm not too keen on walking into a prison. If they lock me up, I'm liable to kill everyone trying to get back out. There's gotta be a few ways through here. Not right.
MSI. I'm not one for outing speeches, but the captain needs our help. So get in there and
Divine bonus. You have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm aware of your diplomatic talents, Captain. You have a gift for manipulation, but I warn you, I'm no easy mark. For all your talents, you are the enemy of Halcyon, and therefore you are my enemy. Hmm. You make a nuanced and compelling argument. Here's my rebuttal. No. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. Fair enough. I'm giving you exactly one chance to parlay with me. Yes, I'm quite aware of your brazen act of corporate vandalism. By the way, those test subjects you killed? They died in agony. My scientists assure me they can recover the data you've destroyed. You've succeeded in temporarily delaying our research. Nothing more.
That isn't true. It can't be. You're trying to manipulate me. That experiment was absolutely essential to the program. My scientists assured me they were close to a breakthrough. They gave me their word. Damn you. You are telling the truth. My scientists have been lying to me, and I was stupid enough to trust them at their word. We're going to have to start all over again. All that research, all those experiments, you've sent us back decades. You were always an unknown variable. I tried to recruit you, but you threw your lot in with that madman, Phineas Wells. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. I know, my friend, I know. And now, it's finally over. The board's finished. It's only a matter of time before the entire system slips from their grasp. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. 
You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. You might have heard of the Earth Directorate, but... Yeah. Uh... I'm not asking you to forgive me. Law knows I won't forgive myself. But I'm going to try to set things right. My apologies. I need to get a hold of myself. We've far more pressing issues to worry about right now. If you have any more questions, ask me. I'll answer as best I can. When I revived you, I thought you were going to help me save this colony. I was wrong. I had our roles reversed, you see. You're the one who's going to save us all. I'm just the one who set you on your path. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. We're... The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Sanjar's civil liberties and worker-centric policies were slow to catch on with the other corporations. But as Halcyon began its long, arduous journey toward recovery, many of Terra 2's smaller townships started adopting MSI's alternative corporate structure and eventually became entirely self-sufficient. In the coming years, many of these townships managed to eke by.
where otherwise they might have starved. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took sublight salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the groundbreaker's docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. As for Reed Thompson, it was said that he lasted exactly two days outside the walls of Edgewater. Years later, a marauder was found in possession of his hat. Junlei Tennyson fought to protect the Groundbreakers' independence. While the board's influence faded, mechanical difficulties forced her to rely on parts that only corporations could provide. The cost was high, and time would tell if Junlei could balance the work with her aspirations for a better future. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. While the colony fell into chaos, she found an island of relative peace with Ada, and they formed an unusual bond. She decided to remain aboard the Unreliable permanently as its chief and sole engineer. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, an MSI subsidiary of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. Before his untimely death, Captain Alex Hawthorne had plans to restore and modify, for combat purposes, a sanitation and maintenance auto-mechanical that he'd found in a state of disrepair in Emerald Vale's scrapyard. That unit remained broken down and forgotten, in the unreliable supply closet to this day. Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. 
breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. <laughs>